Dimensional modeling is a data model design adopted when building a data warehouse. The dimensional modeling pattern is designed from the ground up to be easy for analytical style of SQL queries. Hi, I'm Bindu Kumar from dataacademy.in. Welcome to my channel. In my previous video, I have discussed the concept behind a data warehouse. In this video, we will discuss the concept behind dimensional modeling design. The intention of this presentation is to provide a beginner's introduction to dimensional modeling and how it is different from a traditional data model design. So let's begin. For the best learning experience, turn on closed captions, turn the phone into landscape mode, cast to a big screen if available. You can track the progress of this presentation by checking the progress of the arrow at the top of the screen. Let's first talk about a data model. A data model is a representation of how data is stored in a database. It is usually a diagram of the few tables and the relationships that exist between them. Talking about a database, the operations on a database are primarily of two types, read and write. Let us represent the write operation with a pencil and we will represent the read operation with a magnifying glass. And let us represent the database as a sheet of paper. Here, the writing on the paper using a pencil is an equivalent of a write operation on a database. Now we have a single pencil. What happens when we have multiple pencils trying to write on a single piece of paper? It wouldn't be possible for a single person to use multiple pencils at the same time. So we can safely assume that it is many people attempting to use their pencils to write on a single piece of paper. They could be attempting to write on different parts of the paper or to the same part of the paper. This situation would be chaotic if we don't bring in some sequence to it. We have to plan who gets to write first and where. One way to address this problem is to tear the paper into smaller pieces in some sensible manner and let the authors choose which piece of paper they want to write onto. The same happens when multiple users or applications attempt to write to a single table in a database. It helps to break down one large table into smaller tables. This design pattern is evident in the AdventureWorks database. The AdventureWorks database is a sample database from Microsoft. Check out the link above or the description of this video to see how to install it in on your machine. Here you can see the customer related information is spread across many smaller tables. Let's suppose I want to perform a simple analysis using these different customer tables. All I want to do is to count the number of customers by country. Here is the query to do that. Here is the data model that represents the different tables involved and their relationships. Let's understand the read operation in a similar manner. The magnifying glass on a piece of paper represents a read operation on a database. You can use a magnifying glass to read text from different pieces of paper. However, it is cumbersome and tedious to do so. It would be a lot better to have all the text you need in a single piece of paper. So for reading, it would be better to have all text in a single piece of paper, whereas it is the opposite if your intention is to write. This is applicable to a database read operation. 
if you have one table which has all the data that you need to read then it makes things a lot easier and efficient. To summarize, an application that involves many writes as well as reads would need a table design that involves breaking the table down into smaller tables. Whereas an application that involves mostly reads will be efficient if the table design involves fewer tables. For example, an online banking application that requires large number of smaller tables. And this is due to many users using the system simultaneously to perform various updates, which can be thought of as many authors trying to write to a single piece of paper. Hence, we segment the paper into smaller pieces. A data warehouse is an example of a system that requires small number of large tables. This is due to many users using the application to read lot of data. A characteristic of a data warehouse is to write the data once and read it many times over. So it is the read operation that is dominant in a data warehouse. Now, let's look at the data warehouse part of the AdventureWorks database. For this, I'll select the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2017. Here you can see all the customer related information is in a single table. This makes it a lot easier for analytics. We will now try the same analytics as before, which is to count the number of customers by country. But this time, we will use the tables in the data warehouse. Here is the query to do that. Notice how simple it is to understand the query as well as to make any changes. Here is the data model for it. This simplicity exists because we choose to use the concept of dimensional modeling when it comes to a data warehouse. And we choose dimensional modeling because we know that it is the read operation that is the most dominant operation for a data warehouse. A quick note, the process of breaking down data into smaller tables so it is easy to manipulate them is called normalization. The opposite of it, which is to consolidate many different tables into fewer but larger tables is called denormalization. It is safe to say that in a warehouse we follow denormalization. But there are proven techniques that we use to denormalize. I'll explain this in the second part of this video. This concludes part one, a quick introduction to dimensional model. Join me in the next part where we will discuss about dimensions and facts which are the building blocks of dimensional model. With a pencil, a magnifying glass and a sheet of paper, we have conceptualized how design of database tables are influenced by whether it will be used dominantly for read or dominantly for write operations. We will now discuss on the read operation. When it comes to building a data warehouse, the input data often comes from various systems. These can be represented as different pieces of paper. Now, the challenge is to decide how to merge these different pieces into fewer but larger pieces of paper. Let's start with the familiar example of sales. Imagine you are a sales manager for a large retail store. You walk in in the morning and you ask your associate, how was our sales yesterday? Your associate responds, we sold products worth $15,000. Now, is this response complete? Is this enough information for you to plan the work ahead as a sales manager? Or does it elicit more questions from you? I would bet that this would prompt you to ask more questions. I would ask questions such as, which product did we sell most? Which product didn't we sell at all? which is our best 
selling store and in contrast which is my poorest performing store I want you to observe the questions here each of these questions give a meaning to otherwise a meaningless data so when the associate said fifteen thousand dollars it is just a measurement a measurement will have more value when it is expressed in the context if the associate said that we made fifteen thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars of it was made by top three stores it gives a useful insight into my sales operations so the context here is stores similarly the associate could say a particular product XYZ contributed to eight thousand dollars of the fifteen thousand dollars this is also very useful information here the product is the context So the context is what makes a measurement more meaningful and insightful, which otherwise is just a boring number. I listed store and product. I can also say that store and product are factors that influence my sales. Similarly, what other factors or context can influence sales? Can you list few more? Here. I have listed product, store, customer, promotion, date, and geography. Going forward, let's refer these contexts as dimensions. We can use these dimensions to give our measurement more meaning. So, when the associate responds with fifteen thousand dollars, we can now ask our associate questions like. Show me the sales by product. Show me the sales by store, or by customer, promotion, date, or geography. In this example, the products, store, customer, date, geography, or call dimensions. The event that is being measured is called a fact. Here, it is sales. So. there you have it dimensions and facts facts are the business events that you want to measure and the dimensions are what gives these measurements more meaning let us consider another example imagine you are a road safety manager let's suppose you want to analyze accidents this is a lot similar to analyzing sales So, what are the dimensions and facts here? The dimensions could be location, weather, vehicle, passenger, date, time, driver, and road condition. The fact will be accidents. With a dimensional model. that consists of the above dimensions and facts we get answers to analytical questions like show me the number of accidents by state and county show me the accidents by vehicle type and brand show me the number of accidents by time observe that we have state and county that are both characteristics of a location these are called dimensional attributes so location is the dimension and state and county are the attributes of the location dimension there could be other attributes to this dimension such as city state country zip code street and others so a dimension is made up of many dimensional attributes that all together describe the characteristic of the same dimension you can observe this pattern in vehicle type and brand these are the attributes of the vehicle dimension so each dimension is a collection of related dimensional attributes a fact table can be seen as a table 
that captures the interaction between these different dimensions. In sales, a sale is a fact that captures when a customer visits a store, buys a product using a promotion and then pays for it, thus generating a sale. The process of arranging data into dimensions and facts is what dimensional modeling is all about. The fact contains the business event that is being measured and the dimension contains the different context that give meaning to this measurement. The art of dimensional modeling focuses on the dominant read operation of a data warehouse instead of a dominant write operation of a transactional system. The dimensional modeling helps you to build a data warehouse that is efficient for analytics and also makes it easy for the users to understand the data model so that they can be self-sufficient in their queries. There is a lot more that goes into understanding and using the dimensional modeling technique. I kept this presentation as simple and short as possible so you can have a high level understanding of this concept. If you would like a more detailed and hands-on session on dimensional modeling, feel free to contact me on dataacademinion at gmail.com. I will arrange a workshop where we will take a data set, understand how to analyze the data and create a dimensional model in alignment with the business requirement. Thanks for watching this video. If you find this video useful, please do support me by sharing this video, giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.